Hello nerds! Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is the Week in Nerddom Music Edition for the week of July 30th, 2018. This week we've got a bunch of new tunes, uh, some updates on some tours that are going on right now, and a band that I thought was gone a long time ago is apparently still kicking and just got a new record deal. So we're going to talk about all that right after this. Quiet on the set. Rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander of War, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On generally nerdy. You're listening to Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Coming out the gate, we have Clutch. Love Clutch, and this new tune is called uh, Hot Bottom Feeder, is an example of why I love Clutch. Uh, so, link to the video is down in the description, so you can go check it out yourself. But I just... This song is brilliant, because... So, on the first few Clutch records, Neil Fallon, the lead singer, uh, did an interview, and, and the interviewer said, why don't you write lyrics that make sense? And he said, well, anyone can make sense. So that kind of gives you an idea of where they started, and now they're, they're very specifically making sense. This new song is basically a crab cakes recipe. Uh, it's not a precise recipe because there's no real measurements. It's just kind of a little bit of that and a little bit of this and, and this is the kind of crab to use, but it's a whole song about making crab cakes. Um, and it's so groovy. So groovy. Uh, the one thing about this tune that I feel like also sets it apart from uh, what we've heard so far from their new record. Uh, new record, by the way, Book of Bad Decisions, still coming out later this year. Uh, is that the the production on this sounds like the last few records. There's not the same uh, bass tone, there's not the same overall sound of the band as we got from How to Shake Hands and uh, I can't remember the name of the other tune that came out first, um, the one about the microphone. So, not that that's a bad thing, it's just kind of showing you that they are trying a bunch of different stuff, and maybe this was one of the first songs they recorded before they got that bass tone, before they got that guitar tone. Uh, but either way, groovy, groovy, groovy tune, and if you want to learn how to make crab cakes, this is a decent recipe. It's not a great recipe, but it's a decent recipe. Uh, so yeah, clutch, new tune, link in the description. Moving on. Next, we're talking about a band called Flaw. Uh, I don't know how many of you out there are listening to, or listened to the, it wasn't exactly new metal, but it was like new metal adjacent. It was about the same time. It wasn't, it wasn't exactly metalcore either because it wasn't that heavy. I don't know what to call it, but Flaw was what it is. And that I, I saw Flaw, I think twice, once on Ozfest and then once they opened up for Mushroom Head and Lamb of God. Uh, I talked about that tour on, you can follow the card, I talked about that tour on the, er, cards over here, whatever. I talked about that tour on the uh, Mushroom Head interview that I did with Stitch a uh, month or two back. Very interesting tour, Fla was the opening act, and then Lamb of God, and then Mushroom Head, 40 Below Summer was supposed to be on the bill as well, but they got sick or something. Um, Fla is not a bad band. Fla is not a great band, but Fla is not a bad band. Uh, they're really cool guys. I met them on that show. And, I mean, I've got a t-shirt with all their autographs on it. Not that that's really worth anything anymore. But anyway, I'm rambling about the band. They have... They have a radio-friendly... I guess active rock would be an okay way to put it. Uh, active rock that we learned from Eclectica when we interviewed the drummer from the local band that I can't think of right now. Um, and I, so this is a very interesting thing. The The name of the song, you can find the link to it in the description. The name of the song is uh, Conquer This Climb. And it's kind of got the... Over the covert religious thing going for it like early 
uh, the early metalcore stuff and the, the Christian metalcore stuff did. Um, but I don't think they're a Christian band, but they, so they haven't put out a record for a while, I guess, and they're putting out a new one. I didn't catch the name of it. All I saw was this song. They're doing it through a GoFundMe, and they got uh, recognition from the Colbert show, Stephen Colbert's late night show. And he put him on. He's in the video for this song. He was talking. He, he's brought them up in his monologue like three or four times in the last month. And, and so now they got recognition enough that they signed a new record deal with some indie record label that I've never heard of before. Uh, but you can see uh, that in the description as well. Um, the new tune is okay. It, it sounds like they went to a producer who didn't know how to mix uh, metal necessarily. Like, not that the tones are really all that bad, but the vocals just there so there's two different vocals right you have the melodic vocals and then you have the screamy vocals the harsh vocals and the melodic vocals sound okay the harsh vocal sounds bad not his vocal tone but the mix it sound they 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 totally like afterthought that mix it 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 falls back behind everything else and it becomes muddy and you can't understand what's going on with it. And I've seen them perform live. I know the dude has a pretty clear scream voice. So maybe that's changed in the years, but like the volume is brought down there. It's over compressed. It's just, I don't know. It, it really, really was a thorn in my side when listening to this tune. Otherwise it's a, any radio friendly tune you would hear right now anyway. So it makes sense that they would be getting more recognition right now, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. Again, link in the description. Let me know what you think of the video, and we're kicking on next. We're doing a couple of tour updates. We're talking about Lamb of God first. Lamb of God uh, drummer Chris Adler is sitting out on the Slayer tour. Uh, the only thing that they said about it in their release, which was just a tweet on Twitter, uh, was that it was for unforeseen for, for circumstances, for circumstances, unforeseen circumstances. And it's, I, they didn't really go into it beyond that. I don't understand what else is Chris Adler doing. Maybe he's in rehab. I mean, I know they're getting older, so they're kind of cleaning up. I doubt that's a thing. Cause I don't think Chris is one of the ones that really has an issue with that. I don't think the rest of the band really has an issue with it besides Randy and Randy's clean. So I don't know what this could be, but it's very interesting. Uh, they contracted a guy named Art Cruz, who has played for Prong and Winds of Plague. Uh, he's going to be sitting on the throne uh, throughout the Slayer tour. And I saw some fan shot videos, and I it's not the best audio quality, so I'm not linking to him in the description. But from what I did see, he's basically hitting all the same notes that Chris did. Uh, there were a couple of moments where I felt like he was putting his own flair on it and not that that's a bad thing, but it's just not Chris. So still solid Lamb of God. So if you are going to see Lamb of God and Slayer, you will still get a hell of a show from the guys in Lamb of God. Just be a different guy behind the kit. That's all. Uh, and then just a real quick thing, uh, Manson's sick and canceled a tour date, but so he's blaming it on the flu but he only canceled one date. It seems suspect to me. I did. There's there's no more to it than that. So we're gonna keep on moving. Just thought that was interesting. Next on the list, we are talking about Mashuga and the uh, rhythm guitar player. Where's his name? I, I always I always suck with pronouncing their names because they are uh, Swedish, I believe somewhere from that area of the world. And so their names are very difficult to pronounce. Uh, Martin. Hagstrom, Hagstrom, uh, the rhythm guitar player from Meshuga, uh, was doing an interview with Rauta at the Tuska, 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 I think, the open air festival in Helsinki, and he said, he took, he took the blame for Gent. He said, sorry, we didn't mean to create that uh, genre, but we did, our bad, sorry. Uh, very jokingly in the interview, he, he wasn't like mocking the subgenre, but they have been pretty vocal with their dislike for the subgenre. They uh, market themselves not as a gent band, but they are an aggressive experimental band. So there is that. Um, and then also in Meshuggah News, we got a little bit older interview with Thomas Hockey. Ha Hawk? Hake? 
uh, drummer. <laughs> and uh, he says that we are not likely to see anything new from Meshuggah until 2020. That's four years between records. Uh, Violent Sleep of Reason came out in 2016, so that's pretty on par with kind of their output uh, as of the last few records. So not really a, a shock there, but at least we know they're, it's, it's kicking in the back burner. So um, next is kind of a meta bit of news. There have been a couple of studies that have come out that say heavy music is good for you. Um, there has been a recent study uh, commissioned by O2, who own the infamous O2 Arena, where Michael Jackson was supposed to kick off his This Is It tour, uh, and also was supposed to film the DVD, and that's what created the This Is It uh, 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 documentary, was done at the O2 Arena. So O2, it, the, the, the study possibly is biased a little bit, because they're the ones that commissioned it. They did not conduct the experiment, but whatever. Uh, the actual scientist who conducted the experiment is a guy named Patrick Fagan. Um, he is a be behavioral scientist and associate lecturer at Goldsmith University. Uh, the results of the study say that, and this is a quote, um, spending just 20 minutes will increase one's feelings of well-being by about 21%. Spending 20 minutes at a concert. Uh, the, the, this first study says if you go to a live show, so this isn't specifically about heavy music, but if you go to a live show, it's good for your health. It'll extend your life. Um, that you kind of have to take that a little bit with a grain of sand because it was commissioned by O2. So that's a little bit interesting. But uh, in other music is good for you news, there have been a few other studies, specifically a uh, study in frontiers in human neurosciences and neuroscience uh, that have suggested that heavy music specifically is good for you. Uh, scient or, uh, psychologists and scientists and stuff have, have kind of theorized for years that listening to aggressive music makes one more well-adjusted because you are more psychologically capable of dealing with the negative things in life because you listen to music that come across and, and force you to deal with that, essentially, or help you to deal with that when you're in those moments in your life. Uh, but the specifically, this, this study says uh, has some numbers. It says 79% of participants said extreme music helped them fully experience anger so that they could move through it because you can't move through it until it's been fully experienced. 69% uh, said that this music called, calmed them down. 74% agreed that it improved negative moods like sadness. Most significantly, all participants agreed that listening to extreme music enhanced their overall well-being. Uh, there's Again, if you Google this, there are a number of studies that suggest this. So, I don't feel so bad for throwing a bunch of heavy music in the music side of things, because that's all we're talking about this week, is something at least slightly aggressive, because I wouldn't really call Flaw all that heavy. And Manson has his moments, but it's not really... He's industrial, not necessarily industrial metal, so still aggressive. Uh, but then our last bit of news this week has to do once again with Dark Knight's Metal. Uh, we got another track. This one was from Jerry Cantrell. It's called Setting Sun. Link, again, is in the description. Link to most of this stuff is down in the description. Uh, I'll see if I can find the links, because I didn't, I wasn't thinking, uh, for the heavy music stuff that make, you know, suggest that it's good for you. I'll find a couple. Um, but again, Google that one. Anyway, Dark Knight's Metal, Jerry Cantrell. This song kind of puts me back on track for being super hopeful for the rest of the disc. Uh, it's, I mean, it kind of sounds like Alice in Chains. And I was seeing online, a lot of people are like, well, Alice in Chains isn't metal, they're grunge. And they're heavy, who cares? It's all taste and subgenre elitism anyway. These guys are heavy and aggressive. Jerry Cantrell is the one of the main songwriters for Alice in Chains, so it makes sense that they went to this guy. He's been a staple in the heavy music scene. Uh, Alice in Chains does not run away from the metal tag anymore. So it, th that's why they chose Jerry Cantrell. But it's a fantastic tune. Go check it out down in the description. And that is where we are ending this week's episode, guys. Thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. 
What did I miss? What should we talk about next week? Let me know in the comments down below. If though you want to go deeper into the conversation, jump over to the website, generallynerdy.net. You can find all the links there, uh, all the social media pages, everything, freebies, all of that are up on generallynerdy.net, even a link to the Patreon. And the Patreon page, patreon.com slash generally nerdy is where you can go support the channel a little more directly. Uh, there are four tiers. The bottom tier is just a dollar. I give you almost double the content for just that dollar a month. So go check out patreon.com slash generally nerdy. <clears throat> if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button. If you like this episode, click the like button. If you're falling behind in your nerd news and you want to catch up, click or tap that box right there to the left of my face to do that. But before we go, click boxes and things, guys. Always, always remember that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here. <laughs>